So everyone, this is Christine Jones. She is an Atlanta native. She's still in Georgia doing all of the things. My girl just launched, is it okay if I say it? Yeah, 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 yeah. She just launched her nonprofit agency. Um, she is an all around creative. She's great at so many things. And this is a conversation that we have as friends on a regular basis. But the reason why, not just because she's my friend, but the reason why I wanted to discuss this particular topic of creativity and you know avoiding burnout and focus is because she's also an integrative wellness life coach, right? I got it right. You got it um, right. <laughs> which basically means that she can help you get your life together, including your, pro your professional life. All the way. <laughs> so I'm excited to chat with her. Um, please, let's start off with first, what the heck does an integrative wellness life coach do? So integrative wellness, I know it's like a long, and so people are like, girl, you're a wellness coach, you're a life coach. I said, well, I'm not just that, right? Because a lot of times when people think of life coach, they think business, they think I need to launch myself um, from a divorce and move forward or right. leave this company and move forward. So with integrative wellness therapy, we focus on the whole person. So we deal with the mental, the spiritual, the emotional, and the physical. So it's not like I can coach you on business. I can coach you on wellness. I can coach you in life. I can coach mm -hmm. you on workout together. Because, you know, we tried this for a long time, working out, exercising, and it was start and stop, start and stop. You know me, multiple businesses attempts, start and stop, start and stop. Right. And that right there's a mindset shift that needs to take place and so a lot of times we call it procrastination but I think that's really fear and I think so when you look at integrative wellness we look at the whole picture so you may come to me and say you know I, I want to launch this business and I don't know what to do or how to start okay mm -hmm. what have you tried before yeah I've tried a couple of businesses before but I just you know I don't know why I stopped so I'm gonna listen to that but I'm gonna dial it back to what emotional, what relationships, what, what are you doing physically? How is your health? How are you eating? You know, right. if you're dealing with depression, that could be a start and stop. Is your depression stemming from your diet, your lack of vitamins, minerals, and nutrients, relationships, right. outdoors, girl, all of that. Well, just, you know, I did tell the audience a little bit, like you and I have talked so many times over the years because we do wear many hats and we, we fancy ourselves being great at so many things. And last year in the fall, I posted something that said, you know, instead of taking 20 trainings, and this is for my permanent makeup artist, instead of taking 20 trainings, take the one, master that, and then move on to the next. Some folks got in their feelings and I want to say, get out your feelings and get into your bag. But it was coming from a place of personal experience because you know, I'm like, I want to do this. And I want to do that. And oh my gosh, this thing is cooking over here. And what was happening was I wasn't able to see things through to completion and to excellency because my mind and my, my efforts were all over the place. Right. right. So instead of giving something, even if I was, you know, tried 70%, instead of doing that, this one was getting 10%, that was getting 20 what do you, as, you know, a woman who's experienced this herself and now as this integrative wellness coach, what do you think makes us do this? Like, truly, besides, like, fear, like, what is it that, that forces us into this mindset of we have to do all the things instead of, like, the one or two things? Okay, so, you know, that's a loaded question that could go past a whole lot of time. I'm, I'm going to dial it back to, it's going to boil down to the individual, right? Because I can't, I won't make a general statement and say, typically it's this, or typically it's because of that. I'm going to speak from my experience, right? Because me and you have been down forever. And I've called you many a days, like, I'm about to do this. And you're like, nope, dial it back, dial it back. And you'll kick me in my butt, you know, a few choice words here or there. Girl, you need to focus on this. Do this. Get this done. The last time we talked, you said this. So for me, that's accountability. I think for me, what caused that is, for me, it stemmed from a place of wanting to be approved and wanting to have like these accolades because of the trauma I grew up in, in my background, it was like you felt good, right? When you have prestige or you get an award or you're recognized for this or you own that and then everyone's talking about it. 
So for me, to be straight up honest, I sought after that feeling because it made me feel good, right? I modeled. It felt great to model. But once I came off the runway, it's like, or came out of a photo shoot, then you got to deal with your stuff. Right. And so sometimes it's just you wanting to achieve. As I got older, I like success. I like having my own. I like achieving. I like accomplishing. And then I also like helping people. So right. For years, I was like, Nika, what do you need to do this? And you're like, girl, can you focus on your own stuff? Or I'll call you like, hey, I'm helping so-and-so launch this. And you're like, can you focus on your own stuff? But let's be honest. It took me a minute to get there, too, because I was in the same boat as you where, and I still am to some respect, where it's give, 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 give. But you're giving in so many areas that you're like, oh, God. How do I fill my cup back up? And why is it that I find myself in this space where I make myself uncomfortable because now I'm doing these 20 things? Yep. Like, what is the thought process there? You know what I mean? So I appreciate you bringing that up and saying like, yeah, you got to dig deep and figure out like what happened that made you feel that. What is, you know, what is the driving force of what you're doing? Me and a girlfriend were talking today about a, a vision board. And I said, I have a value board. She's like, what's a value board? Ooh. And I said, well, it's a vision board, but it's based on values. Because we go to these vision board parties, and listen, I'm all for putting something in front of you. If it's spiritual, oh, if you see it, you can have it. If it's just what you like to do, you want to draw that energy to you, what you put out, you get back, universal law. But a lot of times I find that my old vision board had 50% of what I wanted, and right. the other what I've seen everybody else do. You got to have this, this, and this. And I remember my husband having us read this book, Successful Time in Life Management, and it talked about your values. What would you almost die for? Well, my <laughs> list of ideas and businesses that I wanted to do went from here to here. Right. Now I want to focus in on what's really inside of me. And like you said, you can be a Jill of all trades. I love when you posted that. A Jill of all trades and a master of none, but begin to master the one and you'll see if you really sit down and write it out, your heart, your, your passion, your drive, all that's going to come together. From my art business, my design business, to my nonprofit now, to my coaching practice, all of that deals with the creative side of me right. and helping people. But then you have all these other things out here. So it's like just dialing it back to nice. what do you value and then make that your vision board. Okay, so you just kind of did like a little mind blow on me, moving it from just the basic vision board to like digging deeper. So, okay, you can have Gucci up there. You can have, you know, vacationing in, you know, wherever, Mykonos. But what is the underlying, what value do you want to bring and what do you, <sighs> okay, so I have some work to do. Do you want the Gucci because you generally love Gucci, their pattern, what they stand for, their fashion statement? Or do you want Gucci because society has made it this prestigious brand? Because there's a lot of unknown brands out there that are twice as expensive as Gucci. It's just we so focus on the Louis Vuitton, the Gucci, the Birkin bag, all that stuff. Or do you just do you just generally like it? So you have to decide. Because I've had this all this stuff on my vision board. Oh, I want this car. I want that car. Now I'm just kind of like... I still want my Audi A8. I would love a G-Wagon. It's just about what you value the most. And that way, when you're striving for it, you will really concede the consistency in doing it. Because you know, right. we talk plenty of times about all these business ideas. We have all kinds of books. But now when you dial it in, I can see everything that you've ever strived for you're doing now. Because that's what you value. All the other stuff so... is when I what I think about what you said a moment ago right so you are an artist you do mm -hmm. love to create you do love to help how were you able I get the value board how were you able to like just stop for a moment and say how can I take all of these skills and all of these things that interest me and kind of shrink them down from 20 things to mm -hmm. now two or three like what was that process because I, I feel like when you are a creative and people all, oftentimes associate creative with just like art, right? Yeah. Creative doesn't necessarily mean, you know, being a visual artist or being a dancer. It could be like me. I'm creative with problem solving. I will, yep. you come with a problem. I've got 1000 ways we can solve that problem. Yep. How, 
how were you able to dial that into the two or three things and like really bring those skills and those interests together? Okay, so this is straight up honesty for me. I have been praying for so long for self and I would share stuff with you. I share stuff with my husband. I have a village, I believe, small, small, small village of people that I would bounce stuff off to. And it's like a ping pong. So when I'm venturing out to go here and the last thing I told you was, I just want to paint. And you were like, girl, start that own business. Like, go ahead, all the paperwork today and paint because you're a dope artist. Well, honestly, I didn't believe in my art, right? I sold art. I've sold art to a lot of people. And mm -hmm. when I, I look here, a lady approached me about my art. Like, oh my God, who's the artist at this table? And I'm like, me? She's like, oh my God, we have to get you da 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 And I'm like, oh, so my art is really dope. So it started out with me with believing in what I was really trying to do. Being a creative, you're right. My brain can go, it's like that pretty butterfly. Me and you talk and all of a sudden I'm like, oh my God, look at that flower, you know? Wait, wait, like that movie Up when the thing, the dog is talking, he's like, squirrel. And I'm like, yes. Yes, yeah. yes. So, and it could be in the middle of a meeting and I'll be like, oh my God. And I'll just start writing something down. So I had to literally learn to create a schedule, learn to write things down and say, what do I really want? Because I was touching, and I, you know, I've been working on my nonprofit prices, Jules, forever. My girlfriend who owns Madeline's Gate, I've been on her board and walked alongside her with her, her runaway at risk program. And she'd always tell me, you need to do it, you need to do it, you need to do it, you need to do it. And then you would say things, and then my husband would say things, and I'm just like, mm, okay, yeah, but I want to do this. And I was a Jill of a lot of things, but I, I, I mastered a few. But I had right. to realize once I sat down and really wrote out, what do I really, really want? Not what my husband wants, not what my kids see me want, not what I told you I was going to do last week. And because right. of my... I don't want her saying, oh, she all over the place. Not none of that. I didn't care. At first, I don't care what anybody think. I've had plenty of people tell me, girl, what don't you do? <laughs> Whatever right. I want to do. Because I'm going to keep striving and I'm going to keep creating until, okay, if that don't work, fine. I'm going to go over here and try this. While I'm building what I'm passionate about. And I had to be honest with myself. And I was in real estate school last year. You remember? Year before. Maybe last year. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Can we do real quick? all of the things that you've done. I'm going to name a few. So licensed no. massage therapist, she's an artist. She is the client service specialist. She is a designer. She's, I have a handbag that she made me. This, my friends here can do so many things. So when she's talking about real estate school, she was doing that too. And I was like, but, but why? Like your husband's doing that. Do you have to do that too? Like, why are you doing it? Do you like, <laughs> I love buildings. And so he even was like, babe, be a builder. And I'm like, I can be a builder. He's like, yeah. I'm like, draw it for somebody because I'm real big on space and lines. And I'm like, this is wasted space. You're spending all this money for space. But then I was just like, I just want to help young girls and women. I want to be what I needed in my life to somebody else and rebuild that hope. So I just said, you know what? I'm going to go for it. And that's right. where I did all that I could do. Finally finished my paperwork for my nonprofit set up my bit my art business design graphics web help you create your own all of that and just decided to step out and do it period like right. those are my top three right i learned from you the funnels with the sticky tabs on how to go i have a whole like what do you call it a uh, poster board where yeah. I and just put my curriculum this subject this is the, the, the things and my daughter my middle daughter she was helping me write them and stick them on her she's like this is a lot of subjects and I said yeah because you can't just say we're going to go from here to here and not show them how so right. it took discipline because I, for me I was never disciplined in time management and a schedule I could walk you through it and you know I'll be ready to do this 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 and this but when it came to me, I'd always be like, I can do that later because I'm a crunch girl. In the last right. minute, I'm done. So then I created, I got visuals for y'all. So I created these binders. This is my Priceless Jewels binder. It has everything for the most part because it's boxes of stuff that pertains to my business, my nonprofit for Priceless Jewels. I went out, things that work for me that are creative. I went out and bought these beautiful little notebooks from Michaels. Right. As where I'm going, what I'm doing, what my ideas are. You know, I have one for my art company. 
in here is my contracts. It's and when I work with other clients, I give them tabs. So when I meet with them, I know what they're working on. And then I have one for my coaching. So it it dialed it down to what are my three things that I really, really am passionate about doing. And my art ties into my my nonprofit because when I work with a trafficking victim, we can talk about art therapy, right? Right. Which we can get into art. So girl, it all, I don't even know if I answered your question. So <laughs> you did. Let's see. So Glam Star says, you can always get better, but you will never be perfect. Just get started and put your best foot forward. Absolutely. I, you know, I am, and this is my moment of transparency, and I'll try not to get emotional. I am more afraid of not trying than trying, right? Because I don't ever want to feel like I've lived a life where I didn't do what I wanted to do. Yep. So I think... And I'm getting, I'm PMSing. Oh, God. I'm <laughs> Listen, it's all good. It's all good. It's, it's insane because I think for me, there was so much time because I, I suffered with depression for a very long time. And when I was able to figure out, like, how to um, recognize, like, when I was getting there, my do all things came from, well, you don't want to be depressed because when you're depressed, you are not productive. Yeah. And it affected everything. So now it's like, do all the things you want to do, do everything. And that in of itself had its own level of toxicity because yeah. then you don't see things through to 100%. And then what happens? You get depressed. It's like, you know, this, this weird hamster wheel. And it took, I found the beauty industry, you know, I went from corporate nonsense that I hated and hiding under the desk when I was living in Atlanta, like I never fit in. <laughs> they were like, who are you? Um, to then, you know, getting into law enforcement. And again, they were like, who is this? Because I'm just right. bopping around the jails. You know, um, it took me getting into beauty to understand kind of where my calling was. And my calling wasn't necessarily like, I'm going to, to, to be the best esthetician, like giving facials. It was more so, I'm the best at connecting with people. I'm the best at making you feel seen and feel valued. And then it was, okay, but you can't do all of these other things. How do you dial it down to mm -hmm. this particular skill set? So it's like, okay, I'm going to be the best you know, permanent makeup artist because, well, duh, I love brows. But <laughs> when you're with me, I want you to feel your absolute best. And then it was, <laughs> you look good. Then it was, how can I do this for students? Because there are so many women in particular who don't feel like they have upward mobility outside of a man or don't feel like they can accomplish something because they're a single parent or because they became a parent young or, you know, any of these, you know, numbers of things. And at this stage in the game, I can say, and you were with me on this journey in the last two years, I've been able to find where this space is. Now, do I have the answer 100%? No, but I'm also not pulled in 100 places. Right. Now I'm down to about three or four you know, and still kind of navigating my way through. But to your point, I was able to marry all the things that I love, problem solving, mm -hmm. being of service, and making mm -hmm. someone else feel valued, you know, mm -hmm. and kind of finding my space there and being able to do it through this beauty industry. And it, it's so meaningful to me. It's, um, again, I'll, I'll get emotional about it. But it's like when my clients come in, some of these women come in feeling so bad about themselves because of whatever or they're in you know relationships that are not healthy or whatever it may be and I find myself in a space of lending an ear and I'm like well am I in the right industry should I be in therapy <laughs> you know it's a beauty but, <laughs> but yeah to some extent and it's allowed me to find that focus to allow me to 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 give myself in the creative space but to find the focus in this is where your magic is. This is where your yeah. lane is. And it has helped with my own depression. It's helped with my own journey. Because now, 
I feel like I'm, I'm valuable to somebody, you know, like I know I'm valuable because I, I believe myself to be the shit, but you we, know, like it, it's, I don't know. It's such an interesting, um, an interesting it, space to be in. It's, it's a journey. And I have to say that you are so amazing to me. I mean, I know we've known each other for eons. It's like, and it seems like even beyond that, but I have watched your journey from, you know, cause she's like my sister daughter, right? So, <laughs> so I, annoying. <laughs> she's my friend, my sister, cause it's more than a friendship. And then I'm older. So we had this thing back in the day that I was like the mom and I've watched you grow. <laughs> And Nanika, your determination in spite, and we're not going to put all the business in the streets, but the t despite all that you've gone through, you have been consistent at fighting, consistent at moving forward, consistent at building and growing. And when you were in Rikers, because you weren't just in a jail, you were in Rikers Island, which is rough. <laughs> And I remember you calling some nights crying, like the stuff you hear and go through and the, and the experiences people experience, you feel it like, right? That empathetic side of you. And then you got into the beauty business and killed it, like six figures in a year, killed it, right? And then you started launching out like, I just wanna help other women grow. I just wanna help other women have. Because a lot of times as women, you know, we know we're strong, we know we're created for so much more, right? Mm -hmm. If we get back to the Bible, we as a as a help me suitable adaptable it's like an answer right there was a need and here's the answer and so as a woman there's so much inside of you there's so much treasure and your treasure is so beautiful your heart for what you do it's beyond just brows it is therapy it is it's like a beauty thing, right you don't have to go to school to do that when i massage clients would lay on my table and i'm working on an athlete and then all this stuff starts coming out and i'm thinking dude we just stretching Right. <laughs> but, it, right. Number one is touch. And that's a number one need for a human. Well, not number one need, but it's a need for a human. It's so vital. And you just touching the face, you just working on the brow, sitting there listening to her. It's a moment or even him to breathe. And you get to do that. You get to empower people. Women who have had hair issues and skin issues now have right. beautiful brows. <laughs> And that's what's beautiful about you. It shows in your work. It shows in your creativity. And that's where I, you know, I feel like on this journey that I have been on, and I've, I've done a lot of businesses, I've honed down to my three, and it's all about what makes me happy. Because at the end of the day, I don't want to be 75, 80 years old looking back like, well, I wish I could have did this. Right. But I'm old to do that. You ain't too old until you're in the grave to do anything right yeah so if i did in five years y'all it may happen so open a restaurant because i love to cook and it's a creative form for me to just make a i'm real big on plating to make a plate beautiful to make a cake beautiful to make a meal beautiful it's that's what i may do because that's what makes me happy that's what makes my heart happy and i think in life you gotta go with it until you find it now had i stopped years ago I would have never been involved and known all the beauty of tech support, all the beauty of problem solving, all that stuff that I've done has brought me to where I am now. So now I can be that creative expression of, oh, I know what it's like to start 15 different businesses and have 15 EINs and then decide, I don't want to do any of that, or it doesn't right. work. Now, some of that stemmed from me being afraid to be successful because I don't have a college degree. I don't have a, 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 I was a D student, barely made it out of high school, quit college, but I went and got certified in a lot of stuff. And I climbed right. the corporate ladder within every company that I've ever worked for. So most people will sit in a board meeting with me and think, oh, what, how many degrees and what college did you go to? The College of Hard Knocks and Life and, and Self-Study, <laughs> you know? I wanted to learn how to make events better for my job I was at. I got an event planning and wedding degree certification. You know, I wanted to open a spa. My husband was, at the time was my, my bestie and mentor. And he was like, go to massage school. I'm like, I'm going to go to business school. He's like, go to massage school. You're good at it. It's a gift. Right. Went there. So it's like, it all boils down to where you are now and what you're trying to do. And I'm not, I'm definitely not trying to paint the picture. Go out here and just try it all. 
you have to have what do you value what's the plan because being a creative can be so frustrating especially like dealing with depression i've been there i i know what it's like i know what it feels like i've had anxiety for years and struggled sometimes couldn't leave my house my sister had to be me to get me out the home and it's frustrating because you feel like I started this and I can't do it now because my mind can't focus. So you beat yourself up about that. Yep. But then you use that to your advantage. You have pushed through some of the toughest moments with your depression and you steady or creative. You steady or going. I mean, I remember calling you one time. You're like, I'm going through it. And I'm like, I don't know what to do with this. And then all of a sudden that light turns on for you. And you're like, let's do this, do this. And I'm like, hey, I ain't even about that. So it's like, Take time and write write to yourself. Ask yourself, self, or hey, girl, however you want to dress yourself, what do you really want and what's stopping you? Don't tell me it's money because you can find ways to grow your business and get things that you need if it's number one priority. I mean, right. I've been broke and like, how am I going to do this? And then I've started working towards finding out, asking questions. And I remember some people buying some art from me I sold the art. I went and paid for my business license. Like, it will come as long as you're working towards it. It's almost like you're going to pray and ask God for millions, and you just sitting there. You, If you ask me for millions, and you just sitting there, I'm like, what you want the millions for? You ain't doing nothing. You haven't researched nothing. You haven't looked at nothing. So it's it's being able to take that creative mind that that uh, is called so beautiful. It's like the beautiful brain. Right. And I'm not talking this art I'm talking in launching a business troubleshooting problem solving you know being an executive assistant or whatever it is it's taking that and saying what do I really want how do I hone in on I got all these Jill of all trade ideas but which ones mean the most to me put those on one list and then the ones that you would just be okay with doing and satisfied on another list because these things here I have to do if I don't paint right. if I don't help someone if I don't create in creating meaning helping someone else build something I get like stuck I get frustrated so, so you find like your own inspiration through helping the next person yeah it fuels me to see someone succeed right mm -hmm. it you remember you used to sweep me with a broom like girl would you you can tell it I would cuss and be like what the fuck is wrong with you like I, what are we doing right now excuse me guys I cuss a lot I'm gonna cuss right at the but it, it was because we were so similar in that sense that we want to see everybody around us win. So we're like, hey, let me help. Hey, uh, uh. And then yes. before you know it, you done helped everybody else but yourself. And then you're still sitting here 10 years later talking about priceless jewels, nonprofit. People are like, you have a nonprofit, right? I'm like, in my brain, it's one. I do the philanthropy as it's one. But I never got the paperwork so that I can grow and have my building and help rescue these people. So. Right. And you used to tell me, I, I remember one night I called you, we were in my in my house in Brazelton, and I was just like, yeah, I'm going to help so-and-so, and I got, they got this IT, and I want it, and you were like, what, like, are you doing? And I was like, girl, this legit, it's, it's part of my business to help people, and you were like, no, you just told me you were getting ready to do this with Priceless Jewels, and I'm like, oh my gosh, she's right, and then my husband would say it, babe, you can't be a jack of all trades and a master of none. And I'm like, well, I mastered this, got that certification, I mastered this, but I was never giving dedication to what I really wanted to do. Right. Some of that, I was so everywhere, and I felt I had to help others. It was my duty to save the world. And then some of it was fear, fear that I would not succeed, fear that if I put all this money in this program and nobody buys into it, then what? And then I and was I, just... Yeah. I don't care because I would come to this program. Like I just put myself in those shoes. I would come to this and do this. And somebody asked, well, we Hispanic. No, we, we got a whole lot of races in us, but well, I have a time. I'm flat bushy and I'm blackity black, black, black. I might not look it, but I am. <laughs> you got um, what was I going to say? It, it's funny because when you talk about doing all these things, my fear was if I didn't and I slowed down, then I'd start to get sad again. And I didn't want to go through being sad again. So it's like, nope, let me go on and keep busy no matter yep. how much I'm burning myself out. So now I think I would love to give some kind of action steps. Like 
what can our fellow creatives do? So you've said, figure out what your values are, like get that vision board, but make it a value board, mm -hmm. figure out what your values are, figure out what it is that you love to do, right? And how you can integrate it. And I, I have to make this point. I have to make this point. You can be a Jill of all trades, right? The idea is, and I said it in Christine, like Christine has 20,000 certifications. I've worked all over the spectrum of things from the bank to insurance to Rikers Island. I was a CEO to now beauty. And I even worked at Barney's for a minute in luxury beauty. Like there is a, a way for you to take all of those skills that you've acquired and make them work for you. So I don't want anybody to feel discouraged if you feel like you're in that place of being a Jill of all trades and maybe you haven't mastered any. The, the idea for me and one of the action steps that I would give is what skill sets have you acquired from all of those different things that you're magical at that you can now, to your point with values, how can you add that to your value system and make it work for your business? So mm -hmm. don't get discouraged if you've been a Jill of all trades. We all have been. That's the point of this conversation, right? What can you do with all the skills that you've acquired, plus your values, what you know, what you want to do, what, what are you called to do? How can you make that all work? So let's see, um, Donna says, a jack of all trades is a master of none, but oftentimes better than a master of one. And yes, I've heard that saying. However, let's keep it funky. Steve Jobs was not apple, oranges, bananas, and pears, and pineapples. He was apple. It doesn't take away from you having all these skill sets. The idea is not to burn yourself out chasing 20,000 things. Take the things from your experience that you love and figure out what really drives you and then kind of like bring it all to one, right? And that's how you, that's how you can eliminate burnout, right? Because you and I both know we've both been burned out and I, could count the number of times probably not that I've called you like I'm done with this I'm not doing this no more it's not working I'm, I'm over it I can't even think I, I sat in front of a computer and had a logo to make and it was just like yeah I nothing was turning the creative brain was gone the juices were burned out yeah and it's because not only are you trying to build a business or a lifestyle or a career, you still have life, right? If you're married, single, with kids, with no kids, if you work two, three different jobs, there is burnout from the outside, there is burnout from the inside, and there's burnout when you're trying to do something. So, you know, I, I get the jack of all, it's better to be a jack of all trades than a, than, than a master of just one, but what if that person is the just one? So it's almost like what you got to figure out what works for you straight up. You can't, you know, I think there's magic in parents being able to do so many things just to say, like, I really do think there's magic yeah. in that. Like, I don't want anybody to feel discouraged. There is magic in having a curious mind and a curious heart and wanting to try you some things. Right. It's just because don't allow yourself to get burned out and not master something and really just right. honoring yourself. Yeah, I see what she was saying. just want to share the actual phrase. And that's and yeah. that's good and that's fine. I just know for me, okay, so now this is a tr another truth moment. I used to hear that all the time. You're a jack of all trades and a master of none. I remember posting something one time I made, and I think it was one of my handbags, and someone came on my Facebook feed and was like, dang, girl, what don't you do? I mean, last time I turned around, you were doing this. And, okay, so number one, we know that texting and posting can come across in a wrong tone. Right. And so I there and I begin to doubt myself as a creative. I begin to feel like, well, am I doing too much? I was just doing, you know, bracelets. I then did t-shirts. Now I'm doing handbags. I was a, mus a neuromuscular therapist for three and a half years, six years, and then I was doing Mary Kay. <laughs> and, and the list goes on and on. And then I felt like, oh my God. And I remember having epiphany, epiphany. And just continuously hearing how beautiful that is, how dope that is. Oh my gosh, you're not afraid to step out and do anything. Right. And then a girl of mine um, in Florida, uh, Sula, she was like, Do you realize everything you've ever done ties into what you're doing now? And I thought, Oh, all the IT troubleshooting jobs, the tech jobs, I get it, right? 
all the uh, beauty and the, and the massage and the therapeutic side of things comes into my coaching. Oh my gosh, I get it. And I just felt like if I'm gonna look at God, if I'm gonna look at my God and how he created this world, he didn't just make blue trees all over the world and they all the same. He didn't just make blue animals all over the world and they just the same. He didn't just make one car or give that person an idea to create one car. There, if you look at the animal kingdom alone, it's just like, let's just stop. Because the stripes, the colors, the names, the characteristics are all creative. But when he did it, he took time to focus on the one, to master it, to get it going. So it's take all your ideas, right? I wrote mine down. My list was 30 strong. Then when my husband was like, which one would you die for? It went just like this. Which one would you have to do to feel like, oh my gosh, my life is happy. This is what I love and could do without being paid. My right. list came to four. Modeling was my other one outside of all this. And so that's when I started. Let me get focused on what I value the most, what I have to do. I don't care how much you could pay me. If I could do this for that same pay and just have the freedom to help people and create, I would do it. I would leave a job tomorrow, today, to get it done. So take right. time to really get everyone out of your head, everyone else's opinions, what your family said you should do, or the fact that you probably started a business last week and you're like, I'm just doing this until I can figure something out. But you don't wake up at night thinking about it. You don't wake up in the day calling your girlfriend with ideas about it. Right. So I would start there, right? Start with that value, make a list, and then look at that list intently and see how they connect, see how they overlap. See how if I start my nonprofit, then when my nonprofit is launched and I have my building, even if I don't rescue a girl, I'm just working with a woman who maybe has been abused or just stuck in life. We can turn that into a painting moment because I can take right. a blank canvas and show you how you can make a masterpiece, mess it up, and then they'll be like, why do you mess it up? Because we're going to start over because that's what life is. And we're going to paint and build that. Then I can tie and add that right. into it. So... Well, I want to say we have a bunch of creatives here and Glam Star is one of them. Um, and I love it because she said when she gets stressed out with her business, she'll switch to her creative side. And it's funny that you said that because how many times have I been like, I'm stressed and I will go mow my lawn. When it snows, my husband doesn't have to shovel because I'm like, I'm not going to anybody's gym. That's not my personality, but I will be on my roof cleaning the gutters. I will, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, I need to paint something and I'll paint <laughs> right like I, I get the creative out in a different way so I'm with you with that um let's see body beauty skin Miss Delicia we're supposed to grow and change absolutely that's that's part of the experience and I think that too um to we keep saying like don't care about like what your family and friends say like no don't because your change and your growth as an individual it's nobody's business and you don't have to explain that to anyone, right? So if you did start that business last week or you had that brilliant idea last week and this week you're like, you know what? No, that's yeah. okay. Don't wind well, up getting to start another one. Talk to your husband, I get it. But your, your, your thoughts have to be, what do I love, right? What do I really love and want to do that's going to continue in my life? It's like- right. You you have to put yourself in that position. If you started something last week and it cost you 15K, let's use wisdom. Let's think about it. Don't go spend another 15K on the next thing. Write that thing down and just make sure that's where you're going. But I guarantee the 15K you invested, if you really look at it, you're going to learn something from it. Just like you said, when you were at Barney's and you were doing the beauty, the, 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 the rich, rich beauty counters. It's like you learn so much. Like I you... went into it with a, a headspace, though. I did not go into it thinking I was going to be there long. I gave myself a year. I stayed just shy of two. My whole point in being in luxury beauty was at some point, I want my own spot. So I need to understand how to articulate what it is that I'm doing. I need to understand what's your motivation for buying. What do you yeah. care about? One of the biggest lessons I learned was they care about packaging first. Then mm -hmm. it's let me smell it. Then it's mm -hmm. texture. It was like efficacy was the last freaking thing they cared about. That blew my mind. Had I not allowed myself the opportunity to work in that space, I would have never known that. So I went like, again, you even being a correction officer, right? 
let's right. let's be real. I went into that like, oh, 20 year retirement, six year, you know, um, 20 year retirement. It's a six figure job, all these things. But when I realized the first day of the academy, oh, this is not for me. I was like, okay, well, you're going to learn something here. I'm not quite sure what, what I did learn was the psychological part. Yep. Yeah. How can I connect with different kinds of people? I'm an Aries, which means that by nature, I'm self-centered. I was an only child. So by nature, self-centered, how can I connect with other people? That job taught me, I had to get quick with my mouth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, quick with how I thought in order to survive as long, you know, for the short period of time that I was there. Like from every one of these experiences, all the phone jobs I had when I lived in Atlanta. Remember that? I hate it. Even to this day when the <laughs> phone rings, I'm like this. But you don't even answer your phone. You're like, please don't give out my number to anybody. I don't want to answer my phone. And it's but so funny. Just, I learned though, the kids joke around. They're like, why do you sound like that when you're on the phone? Because I can't sound like this. I'm like, hi, thanks so much for calling. Call there's a difference. When somebody's calling your business, you don't want to be like, hello? No. Hey, what thanks so much for calling Call 11. And when I did, blah, 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 you know, I learned. In market research, right? If you look at it, when you were at Barney's, you had hands on market research. You already knew your target market. You knew you wanted a certain style of people, class of people. You'll take anybody in, and I get that, right? You'll work with every demographic, and you have literally work with every demographic, even foreign demographic. I mean, you have, you have like this whole, people say, where's your market research right here? Because <laughs> I've worked here. I've studied this. I've worked for this organization. I've studied that. Yep. And so like um, somebody said something, your purpose has its own path. Zoe said your purpose has its own path. Walk or work it out. Absolutely. Because if I continue to have lived in the shadows of, mm, Three people have said to me, you you a jack of all trades and master of none. And I love the fact that you said Geo, because now I'm just like, I'm not a jack. I'm a Geo anyway. Okay. So I'm trying your whole whatever. But it would it put me in a headspace of being ashamed of my light, being ashamed of my creativity. And then I was just like, girl, that's not even your personality to even mm -hmm. be concerned. But I felt like, well, maybe I am. Then I felt like maybe I should go back to school, right? Because I would always say, oh, I don't have an education. I don't have a degree. So that's why I can't fit in the rooms with other people. But I've been in rooms with Fortune 500 CEOs, was an EA to one. And it was just like, they never knew. When they looked at me, it's like, where's college on your resume? Uh, it's right here. I've, I have College Park. <laughs> college Park, for real. So it's like, that's why you didn't hire that person. Because she looked good on paper. But when you sat down with me and her, I was able to relate and pop problem solve quickly. I understood when a person calls in irate how I got to keep my cool and not be so defensive because this is not my brand, you know? So it's all about just trying to figure out, and I keep saying it, what you love, what you want to do, going for it, but then making sure you set time aside for yourself, make sure you set time aside to breathe, Today, I'm not going to do anything because I've all week I've worked my regular job and I have this life over here and family and friends and kids or marriage or non-marriage. And then you're trying to work on your brain and you're burned out. So take mm -hmm. time yourself to refresh, reflect, find you some good girlfriends. I thank God for y'all and my girlfriends who I can just call and you'll whip me in the shape. I thank God for my husband who I can just talk to and he'll be like, remember last time you told me you was going to finish this. Right. So having that accountability there and finding a tribe that supports. That's what I love about your mm -hmm. color lab brand. It's not just like you said earlier about doing brows. It's not just about beauty. I believe if you continued in the aesthetics path, you would have been the dopest NYC esthetician right now. I'm looking at you and I'm like, my girl's a dopest brow, whatever brow. To help me out here. <laughs> Permanent makeup artist, because I've seen, lives I've seen you in action and when I called you with questions you're on it you're not just about putting pigment on the skin and I worked for you and yeah that's another and she worked for you as your virtual assistant and you know you taught me how to handle the women and you taught me more than just we put pigment it was really when you had that live with the um, nutritionist I was like what other 
beauty permanent makeup artist girl is sharing wisdom down to what you eat on how your eyebrows are gonna heal during that spray process like that takes your business to another level but that shows your passion for people it's not I about just that. it's not about the dollars it is really about educating women on how to be beautiful from the inside out how to grow a business they don't have to launch a permanent makeup business you're just like just open your business what business do you want girl let me show you and if it happens to be in the beauty industry you wrote a book on it you wrote a book on your trial and errors girl don't get me started on you so yo step <laughs> out. out step yeah. out people well, write it down put a plan together create you some books to keep it in front of you because my stuff was everywhere in piles on this notepad on that notepad oh and you mean I like my uh my reminder here my sticky pin board where i don't use it anymore because it was literally pins all over the place with all the ideas and i was like oh no this is why you feel even crazier because it's too much right. happening right. i personally got the big post-it note boards like the big yep. you know and I wrote down, instead of making a to-do list, it was my success list. And I would manage it by what was the most important to medium to low, because I do have, I am on the ADHD spectrum. And to me, everything is important. I'm mm -hmm. like, just like I need to cook dinner for these kids, I also need to get this, this blog on this website and I need to make sure my SEO is on point and I'm doing it myself because I know how to do it because I paid to do it. I learned how to do it years ago. Like you, I'm like certified in all these things. And then I'm like, oh, gosh. Okay, let's go on and use the sticky board. Make sure you have your success list. Give yourself, because the other thing was, if I had 20 things to do, I felt like they had to be done today. Right now. That thought process, when you just said, give yourself a break today, yeah. I went yeah. and I got my nails done. And I went to sleep while I got my nails done. And I, I you know, I love the people that do it because they're just like, do your thing. Yeah. I was snoring in the chair because I needed a break. <laughs> I had an amazing event yesterday with some local PMU artists and some that came from out of town and it was so awesome. But I also worked all day Saturday and Friday and Thursday. Mm -hmm. And today I was like, you know what? You really do need to do your SEO stuff. But now Jaden, the 11 year old, he has a shoot with Abercrombie tomorrow. Nah, I'm gonna be on set all day. I'm gonna go ahead and give myself a moment to not do anything nothing yeah. and it felt so good because otherwise i would be angry and angry at myself for continuing to run on the hamster wheel and burning out so i um i overstand you know you and i connect on that level in in so many ways it's ridiculous like you know the universe makes no mistakes when people come into your life right you're one of those people that gets me in that way and to see even your path and knowing that you have done all of these things but your ultimate goal has always been no matter what you did has always been to help and to serve right yeah. seeing you get to this point where you have finally launched your priceless jewels nonprofit, guys I don't know like if you picked up on it but her nonprofit is about helping women and men and children whomever who've been trafficked to find their way from those situations to find value in themselves and to get back to society and to to love and live and live in you know this fullness all these things that you've done from you know customer service tech support art massage therapy being a pastor all of these things you've written your own book like don't sleep on yourself you've written your own book homie okay yeah all of these things have gotten you to this point where you're able to still live in your purpose of serving but doing it in that creative space and my friend i am proud of you you being Thank an you. integrative wellness coach being able to help others to see through that cloudiness we all need that every single person that walks this planet. And I'm thankful that you are my friend. I'm thankful to also see your journey and to know that I'm not crazy. I'm not in this alone. Like there are other people that, you know, have all these creative things bursting and that it is possible to take all of those, those things that we've learned and to kind of 
squeeze them into the couple of things that you said are valuable to you and that yeah. allow you to love yourself, love the world, you know, live out loud, so to speak. Um, it's pretty dope. And I'm, I'm excited to see what this next step is for you. We will be figuring out how to marry permanent makeup <laughs> and yeah. training to uh, priceless jewels and how to get these trafficked folks onto a path of um, feeling independent and mm -hmm. feeling, you know, finding their own sense of value. I can't, I can't wait. I'm excited. I can't talk about it because we got that um, with that's brewing and I so want to I want to be like oh my gosh once we get this done y'all just watch out but I'm so I'm so thankful Nanika and for you to come alongside that project and where that's gonna go is gonna be amazing so I mean look I'm just I'm just here to keep it real with people I have been I mean I've been working since I was I think 15 when I got my workers permit and have worked all my life in some aspects. And that's been a life of a lot of people. But I've also learned as a woman, we put so much pressure on ourselves to succeed or to be accepted a certain way. You know, dealing with anxiety and depression and, and just all of those ups and downs and highs and lows, being afraid to express that, right? Wondering if I say that I had anxiety and depression, is someone going to come want to coach with me and think that I'm a good wellness coach? Some people right. may say, yeah been through it she gets it but then some people may say no like why like she hasn't even but it's like I don't even care anymore because we have a mental health issue we ain't gonna go out there tonight in this country we have a crisis where we have to address certain things and a lot of times we put so much pressure on ourselves to be like that Instagram business mock that Instagram girl or the TikTok now or whatever other platform clubhouse chit chat all whatever platforms. all the <laughs> on and you put yourself in this box because I've done it right I wrote a book and I watched a girl launch her book and she became an Amazon bestseller I launched my book and my book sat at the bottom of Amazon and they discounted it and I thought what in the world why what am I doing wrong right because I hustled I went I went and did everything I thought this person did but I don't know that person's journey I don't know what right. time she I don't even know who she helped have her launch it but the point is, my book reached the women that it needed, and it's going to continue to reach people. So I had to get myself out of comparison trap. Yes. I had to get myself out of the mindset of what will other people think if I do this? I have the saying, who said it, where did it come from, and is it true? And when I'm doubting myself in business, when I'm doubting myself in launching something or stepping out on something, I'm asking myself, who's saying this to you? Where did that come from, and is it true? And when I dial that back, it's like I almost stop the negative thinking and I focus because everything you do is going to take a process. Process yeah. is what I needed. My husband will tell you, my family will tell you, don't give her no process because she's going to want to microwave it and handle it. <laughs> but I learned, like even with my locks, right? It's a process. I don't, I'm not in love with them right now, but they are way different than where they were when I first started six months ago. And I've threatened to cut my hair every two weeks. And my husband says, babe, it's a process. And I'm like, I don't like that word. <laughs> but a lot, even in this journey, it's teaching me patience. It's teaching mm. me to love me, love my hair how it is. However, this one in the back twist all crazy. It's showing me so much about myself. It shows me about myself in business when I start and stop, when I allow distractions to come in. You have to be okay to say no. Mm. You have to be okay to say, I can't help you today. I can't talk on the phone today. I can't do that today. I can't participate in that today. And make it, a, make it, for me, my nonprofit started 10 years ago. The actual paperwork started last year. I finished it today. Literally finished it today. And it was such a tear-jerking moment because I kept letting other people's stuff get in the way and other things that I doubted about myself get in the way. And then thinking, well, if I do this, am I really going to do it? Well, you've been doing it. You've been doing right. it for 10 years. And that's all that questioning and negativity and wondering if I don't do this, will everyone think of me as a failure? I don't even care. I did it because this needs to be done. Society needs this. And so it's, it's, it's all of those things. It's learning. It's a journey. It's accepting yourself for where you are. It's striving for your dollar. You might not be a six-figure queen or a millionaire queen like some of these girls are posting. Oh, I'm in real estate and I'm a six-figure. A lot of them aren't either. Let's be real, but okay. 
like if you want to dial back your your expenses and what you're spending out and what it takes to grow that business you made a million the first year how much did you spend out and if you did make a million great for you but i may not want the million that puts pressure on people people well, people put that pressure on themselves you got to find out well, what makes you happy where are you content what do you want to do if you want to be the best photographer in the world and be like ansel adams and all these other great photographers go out and do that but if you just want your photography to be seen and that makes you feel good take those pictures while you work that other job and be right. happy because now you have now you have a little balance in your life right because you want balance any area of your life is out of balance, you're out of balance. So that statement is so true. Um, I feel a little, out of, if I'm being transparent, I feel a little out of balance right now myself. And hence me giving myself a moment today, not answering my phone, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the calls, the texts, the emails, everything was coming through. And I went, er, turned it upside down because I needed a moment. I needed a mother flipping moment and I think again as like you said as women we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to be all things to all people and exercising the word no it's gonna be okay and yeah. I can't take on how you feel about me saying no because that's not my business yeah. I need to be okay for me because when all is said and done Nanika still needs to be Nanika outside of color lab outside of being or having the title of mommy outside of the title of wife, outside of any title, I still have to be okay with me. And I love honoring my creativity. Look, my phone was like, y'all been talking for a minute. I, I, I love um, honoring my creativity where it comes to problem solving and, and helping others. But even that, I've learned to slow it down. Like, I'll only do a one to two hour call once a week instead of <laughs> five times a week. You know, um, being able to, like I said, to paint or, you know, and I don't paint like you, I paint walls. <laughs> but your walls and your kitchen look so good. I'm like, she need to come to my house. Girl, I bye. get tired of crazy. I could paint on canvas all day. But when you're like, paint this wall, I'm like, okay, it's got the layer. Can I put some splash on it? So you can come do my house. Look, that's like, I was like, I just discovered spray paint. I'm spray painting flower pots. I'm spray painting the shutters <laughs> of my house. I'm spray painting all the things. And, you know, husband gets home. He's like, well, what are you doing? Not killing anybody, not catching a case today because I'm honoring my creativity <laughs> and getting out, you know, getting out this energy. It's your breathing moment. For me, it's flowers. If y'all could see my back porch, it is a literal and I was like, ooh, I want a plant boutique store with all these exotic tropical plants. Like, people give me plants that are dying, and then the next week they're like, how in the heck did it turn into a tree? I'm like, girl, I got that green thumb <laughs> So, like, you know, yeah. it's, it's the soil when I'm in the dirt. You know, it's, and it's something we call in therapy, we call grounding, where you go outside, you stand barefoot, right? If you're having a moment, you're stressed, and panic attack, anxiety attack, anything, Go outside when it's nice out. Go out by trees. Go walk through the woods. Make sure someone knows where you are. Be safe. But you ground you, right? So for me, grounding is not just standing on the grass, but it's digging in the plants. It's repotting them. It also shows me the cycle of life. Taking a plant from a seed and yeah. then growing. Or taking a plant that's half dying in the store. And I'm like, do you know how pretty this plant is? I'm going to buy it. The lady's like, well, I'll give you a discount. It's half dead. I'm like, it's not half dead. It still has life. It just needs to be nurtured. And that's the same process for you in life. You just need to be nurtured on a path to stay focused. And if you get off focus, it's okay. Because schedules aren't made to be written in stone. They're made for you to rearrange them to fit your day. Stick to your schedule as much as you can because it creates discipline. Right. But I've also, what works for me is to say my morning, my afternoon, my evening, or my day should be like this. And then if I don't get that done, it's okay. I'll make sure I push it to the next day. But I fall right. off of that. I, I don't have a schedule, I'll tell you right now. I, don't, I, have a, I have four planners, three different kinds that I try to figure out what would make me stay on time. But it's really about me being intentional, me setting, okay, Thursday, I'm going to do this. So I have it in my brain, and now I have to learn to articulate that to my family and say, right. okay, time, I'm going to do these things. But it's, it's all in this process of what makes you feel good. You coming home, doing your yard work, pa painting your shutters, that's you releasing that stress, doing something with your hands, which uses your brain, but you're not right. talking. 
And it all of a sudden you'll be like, oh my God, that's what I need to do for this. Oh my God, that's what I need to do for that. Working with my flowers has taught me process, has taught me patience that everybody around me is like, girl, you need to learn to be consistent and take your time. I'm patient with customer service all day. You can yell, rent, rave. We'll be on the phone for two Don't hours. Yell I'm fine with mm -mm. Don't yell at me. Because I'd Listen, be like, I'm sorry. Have you heard Mr. Click? That, uh, cool. That's why I never lasted in any of those jobs. I'd be like, who, who right. are they talking to? It, it, right. it can't be me. <laughs> and you know, not you it's their frustration so i've taken on that side of being always at a tier four tier five now i'm a trainer and it's like how do you handle these irate people i said i sit there and they're like hello and i'm like yes you didn't hear me i heard you sir i'm trying to resolve your problem if you give me a moment i can do that now what else did you want to share with me today no. and then it's just like <laughs> bring it down a little so too, it's no lane right if that's not you don't put yourself in a job like that to right. be stressed you're gonna create burn you're gonna be tired and then when you have time to build your business and be creative you're not gonna want to do it and then you're gonna start getting into this mind trap of maybe it ain't for me maybe i don't know how to do it no it's just that you're burned out and right. so you're gonna put all that negative on what you really love to do and it's gonna be start and stop start and stop start and stop half done here, half done there. You could be a Jill of all trades, master one at a time, figure out the one, one or two that's at the top of your list because some things you can work simultaneously. Right. You can go register online in 30 minutes and start your business, right? Now the guts and the heart of your business may take some time, but that's a checklist. That's a forward progress. That is doing something, so... Well, I want to um, just say someone here said gardening is therapeutic for them. And little mama said, no is one of the greatest words in the English language. Guess what? It's also the same word in Spanish. No. If you want it in, <laughs> yet. No. If you want it in, it's nine. Oh, gardening, yeah. that's credal. That's Miss Marcia. Yes, yes. Yes. Hey, y'all. Well, just to wrap it up, because I text Chrissy and I was like, yeah, let's keep it to like 20, 25 minutes. And here we are an hour and six minutes later. I do this every single time to wrap it up. And we will be back to talk about more soon. Um, value. You want us to yeah. make value boards, not just vision boards, but what do we value? You yeah. want us to take time for ourselves, still honor yeah. the things that interest us but don't allow ourselves to get burned out. So you have your binders, you have a binder for each thing that you're working on so it keeps you on track. So you said, mm -hmm. it's okay to be a Jill of all trades, but just kind of hone those skills in, right? Mm -hmm. And I want to say, have time with your friends. And this is something I'm super guilty of and this is my, my own little final note, and then I'll give you the floor to close out. Make time for your friends. That's something I don't do enough of. I've got a very close-knit group of friends that I've had for two decades, and these are my aces, where I know if the world is falling apart, I could pick up the phone and be like, look, what do you need me to wear? I'm coming through, you know, have that safe space with your friends where you can have these kinds of conversations, expect not to be judged and yep. to get sound advice and maybe even get creative with them. I have that in Christine. I have that in my girl, Steph, who's also a business owner. She's in Atlanta too. Clearly I love Atlanta. I love my people in Atlanta. Um, I have I have that circle and you guys are so meaningful to me and I'm thankful for you always being consistent, being, being people that have integrity and non-judgmental. You know, I could come to you with the craziest things and you're like, okay, girl, so <laughs> let's talk this through. All of us need that space. Um, I will give the floor back to you to close out, let the folks know what you think they should do. Also, please tell them where they can find you if they need your wellness coaching. Cool. So as to everything you said, um, there's so much in my head. I'm just like, ah, 
Um, well, number number one, I appreciate you. Thank you for inviting me to be a part of your platform and all that you're doing. Thank you for being my sister friend, sister daughter, and all of that. And I value our friendship. I value our sisterhood. I value our motherhood. And um, I love what you're doing. And I'm so, 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 so proud of you. You know that. Um, I mean, you and I cannot talk for eight months to a year. And we pick back up like, all right, what, where's it going? What's this? What's that? And, you know, we speak quite often. We've had our pockets where you got busy and I got busy. And I feel like those are those moments where we're funneling and getting it done. And then three weeks, four weeks. And it's like, wait a minute. I ain't talked to her in a minute. Let me call, right? Um, so I agree with you friendship. So I have this thing. It's like a son and it's a will and it talks about what makes a healthy life, right? So there's a spiritual side, there's relationships, there's, um, dancing, there's outdoors, exercise, health, and there's a few other things on there, but everybody may not have all of that. So you want to work towards that. You want to work towards finding a community of people or friend where you can talk to openly, candidly, and honestly with no judgment, right? Right. Um, you want to make sure you take time for yourself. I am really big on writing stuff down. My iPhone is filled with notes. I had all these notebooks that were everywhere. And I realized for me, that's too many spaces. And I had to, as much as people told me, get a schedule, get a calendar and do it. It just didn't wrap in my brain. And I began to feel bad about it. But I had to figure out what worked for me right. and how I I need structure as a creative. I really, really do. I hate structure, but I need structure. <laughs> so it's like, if I don't have it, then I'm like, what's going on? Why, why, you know, somebody say something to me. But then when people say something, it's like, wait a minute. So find that, find what works for you. Write down your ideas, write down your values. Number one, it's, it's writing the vision, which we talk about in the back in the Bible. But when you write it down, you can see it. I used to write in pencil, but pencil to me in my brain is erasable, right? Mm -hmm. Writing in ink, it's like it's written in stone for me. But now they have erasable ink pens. My daughter showed me. And I'm like, don't show me that. Sharpie. So I write it in ink because that's finality for me. Right. And I keep it near me so that I'm reminded of it. I used to, I have stuff on my mirror written down. I had sticky notes. I had sticky notes for a minute, pay for your nonprofit, pay for your nonprofit, pay for your nonprofit, and I would avoid it, right? right. But I had to check myself. And so um, cre create a space for yourself, create a space in your home that is relaxing, that you can go to and be creative. And I love your blue in the My background. My office, yeah. Who is like, it's so common. I can imagine just some candles lit. But create a space. I sometimes create, I'll have a crunchy snack, salty, and I'll have, I've had candles lit before. Sometimes I'll have music going. Um, and just step out on what you want. Make that list. Highlight the most important that you feel you have to do that makes you happy. And then begin to build on those other ones. And you'll begin to see how it all ties together, right? I learned that if, and I'm going to throw this out here, I'm going to try to hurry up. I learned that if I, because I always wanted to cook and have some type of cafe, a place where people can go, come and enjoy themselves, right? Because cooking and serving people is just like, oh my gosh, especially when they're like, girl, what is in this? I'm like, <laughs> but um, my, my, my godmother pointed out, well, you do realize if you did a restaurant, you would hang your art, you're helping people. You're creating beautiful food. She's like, so it ties together. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going I'm, to I'm push that over here because that's not my main goal right now. Maybe one day in my 60s or 70s, who knows? Um, so I said it. So take time for yourself. Create your value. Create a space in your home. And if you don't have a space, find a corner. May organize your desk that when mm. you sit down at that desk, even if you share it, and it's in the living room because maybe your space isn't that big, you decorate that desk, put a plant on that desk. Greenery in your home is so healthy. Now, if you kill plants, I would go for plants that don't require a lot of water. So you can go to your local store and find that out. Um, and, you know, start from there. Start, start being honest with yourself and what you want. And don't feel like if you've been a, I don't know, um, a teacher all your life, but you've had this desire to... I don't know, become a landscaper, but it's been there. Figure out how you can do both of those. You right. know, maybe like friends' yards. Really ask yourself, is this what I want to do the rest of my life? 
or is this what I have to do or someone expects me to do? And then start honing in on how you can come out of that transition and, 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 and not be broken, all that. Um, you can find me right now here on my Instagram page. You can see, yeah, don't go broke trying to start nothing. I mean, it's got to make sense, people. It's got to make sense. But DM me on the Christine Jones, my uh, nonprofit site, which is, you know, I'm the, I'm the web builder, so I've been slow on doing it. But it's pricelessjewels.org. You can go there. You can fill out a question form. And that's where you're going to find me for coaching right now because my web builder from my coaching practice is not finished yet because I'm a little meticulous. So right now you can find me there. Send me a DM. Hey, I want to talk. You know, can we set up? A consultation and go from there but I'd be happy to help in whatever area business life health whatever you want to call it we can get it done so yay well thank you thank you thank you for your time thank you for sharing your story um and for giving us all something to think about and some action steps people I will be working on my value because I have a vision board but I don't have a value board my values are in here and in here but I too need to put them down. Um, the Christine Jones, it's Christine with a K, K R I S T I N E, K R I S T. Correct. Oh, uh, like. <laughs> Did I K. Right? Yep, K R I N E. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She is located in Georgia, but reachable by all means social media, phone, text. She is there. Um, Guys, if you need a good word, she is a woman of faith. She is a wife. She is a mom. She's just an all-around dope human being. And as the topic of this conversation was, a creative. And we'll be able to help you work through your creativity to figure out how to hone those skills into what makes sense for your value system and what it is that you want to achieve in life. Thank you, my friends. I love you. You are amazeballs. And we will definitely be speaking again with you guys about all sorts of stuff because this is what we do. Um, <laughs> yes. So definitely make sure you stay tuned and don't be strangers. Slide into the DMs. Clearly, we're friendly people. It's a non-judgmental group here. Um, can't wait to, to see all the, the beauty that you guys create out there. Thank you, Chris. Love you, boo. <laughs> Good night. All right, guys. Have a great night. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. And thank you guys for the honor of your time tonight. It's much yeah. appreciated. <laughs> All right. All right, beautiful. Bye. Bye. Thanks so much for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, and share.